Welcome back to Fun Nation to Behind the Bumpers. On today's episode, I've got Team 4145 here at the Greater Pittsburgh Regional. We're going to take their, uh, their robot through all of their systems, including their end effector, elevator, uh, and their climb mechanism. Joining me today is Lassia, Curtis, Claire, and Logan. And we're going to talk more about this robot on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Claire, go ahead and take us through an overview of your robot this year. All right, so to begin, we have our pivoting end effector right here, which if you want to go up to the slide position, begins there and intakes. From here, it can go up to all four coral levels. And back down, if you want to spit. Then on the same end effector, we have this variable system where we are able to pick up the algae completely without a motor, or we use the same motor. If you want to intake the ball. We were able to score that up in the net and down at the processor. And then all of this is on a two-stage cascading elevator. And then in the back, behind there, uh, we have an every bot style climber. And then I'm going to hand it over to Lassie to talk about the elevator next. All right, so this is our elevator. It's a two-stage cascade elevator, which allows us to really efficiently hit all four levels of coral, score corals, and also to score up on the barge. And it holds our pivot and it also has lighting on top of it which can be indicators for our drivers that oh it's ready to spit or oh the coral has been successfully intaken or has successfully been intaken. Now I do have a question about your elevator Lassia. Yeah. You told me earlier that you chose to do a cascade elevator. Is there a reason you chose to do a cascade elevator versus a continuous? We just thought it was a much more efficient design and much uh, easier for us to build in our shop because this is also our second iteration of the elevator just because as we designed it, we realized, oh, it's not tall enough for us to score well on L4. So we built it again and we figured that this was the best one to do. All right, excellent. Thanks for taking us through that. Let's go ahead and pass it over to Curtis to talk about your end effector. Yeah, so our main priority for the end effector was to keep it as simple as possible. So we're running it off of one Kraken X60 that powers both the coral and the algae intake. And to keep the algae intake as simple as possible, it's just a passive mechanism with some tubing that'll kick back uh, once these wheels spin to pick up the algae. The goal was just to have as much friction as possible to hold it in, so we added some friction tape on this really large plate that's able to hold the algae in even if we get hit from the side or the front. And then the pivot is a max spline shaft, which just added more rigidity and support so that our pivot wasn't floppy. And then we have a 25 to 1 gearbox on the bottom to actually move our pivot. Um, the lower gear ratio just made it fast. Logan, can you move it up a little bit? We also have funnels on the end here to help guide the coral in when it's dropped from the slide because um, it's obviously a little bit of a tight squeeze, but if they hit the funnels on the side, they're able to go in at an angle and still intake. Now, I do have a question about your intake. When you started this season, did you prototype any other intakes? Um... When you looked at your robot architecture, did you look at doing maybe a funnel or what led you to choosing to do algae and coral directly through the same mechanism? Yeah, so we chose to just stick to one mechanism. That made it, in our minds, that made it as simple as possible. We previously had the algae mechanism on the bottom. We had another set of wheels on the bottom. However, that was difficult when the elevator was moving because the mechanism on the bottom wouldn't like, potentially hit the elevator on the way up or down. So we moved it to the top. That made it easier for the programmers just to be sure that we weren't gonna accidentally hit the elevator on the way up or down. All right, excellent. Now, Logan, can you go ahead and take us through a little bit of your software? Yeah, so even with what he was saying about redesigning the algae intake to make it not collide, we still have some collision prevention you can see. So if I go into stow position, it stows. But then if I move up, it moves out of the way first before it moves up to the position. 
and it also automatically tucks itself down just so that we don't hit our the reef when we're you know scoring because it sticks out pretty far. But, anyways, the other thing that we do is a lot of automatic alignment. We don't just align with the reef in autonomous, we also do it in teleop as well because we just wanted to make sure we're getting the fastest cycles we possibly can, as reliable as possible. So to do that, essentially our controller allows us to not only just press a button to just go to the pose, but you can also hold down on the trigger to not just go to the pose, but also automatically drive up. And then, like I said, stuff like the lights helps the drivers know when they're able to shoot. Now I see a camera mounted onto your swerve module here. Are you guys using a custom software for alignment or is that using some sort of uh, off the shelf solution? We are using um, our own custom solution. It was uh, adapted from 6328's solution, but we, we changed it so that it was a little bit faster and worked a little bit better with our code. But essentially it's just one Arducam global shutter monochrome camera that sees the April tags. And if you look in here, there is an orange pie down here processing all the data and then it just does the positional detections based on the April tags to know where our robot is and sends that back to our robot Rio. So we use that in autonomous to make sure we're following paths correctly and accurately. And we also, of course, use that during teleop because we align with pretty much everything. With the reef, um, when we intake, we do it when we intake algae as well. And then we also do it when we're scoring into the processor in the net, just so that we have you know, the option of doing everything manually, but alignment to make things faster and more accurate. All right, well, thank you so much to Team 4145 for being an inspiration to the FIRST community and showing off your robot today. Good luck at the rest of this event, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.